One of the most beautiful things that ever was done, perhaps, said Inspector Weald, emphasising the adjective, as preparing us to expect dexterity or ingenuity rather than strong interest, was a move of Sergeant Witcham's. It was a lovely idea. Witcham and me were down at Epsom one derby day, waiting at the station for the swell mob. As I mentioned, when we were talking about these things before, we are ready at the station when there's races, or an agricultural show, or a chancellor sworn in for a university, or Jenny Lynn, or anything of that sort. And as the swell mob come down, we send him back again by the next train. But some of the swell mob, on the occasion of this derby that I refer to, so far kidded us as to hire a horse and shay, start away from London by Whitechapel and miles round, come in to Epsom from the opposite direction and go to work right and left on the race course while we were waiting for him at the rail. That, however, ain't the point of what I'm going to tell you. While Witcham and me were waiting at the station, there comes up one Mr. Tat, a gentleman formerly in the public line, quite an amateur detective in his way, and very much respected. Hello, Charlie Weald, he says. What are you doing here? On the lookout for some of your old friends? Yes, the old move, Mr. Tat. Come along, he says. You and Witcham and have a glass of sherry. We can't stir from the place, says I, till the next train comes in. But after that, we will with pleasure. Mr. Tat waits and the train comes in, and then Witcham and me go off with him to the hotel. Mr. Tat, he's got up quite regardless of expense for the occasion, and in his shirt front, there's a beautiful diamond prop, cost him 15 or 20 pounds. A very handsome pin indeed. We drink our sherry at the bar and have had our three or four glasses when Witcham cries suddenly, Look out, Mr. Weald, stand fast! And a dash is made into the place by the swell mob. Four of them that have come down, as I tell you. And in a moment, Mr. Tat's prop is gone. Witcham, he cuts them off at the door. I lay about me as hard as I can. Mr. Tat shows fight like a good un, And there we are, all down together, heads and heels, knocking about on the floor of the bar. Perhaps you never see such a scene of confusion. However, we stick to our men, Mr. Tat being as good as any officer, and we take them all and carry them off to the station. The station's full of people who have been took on the course, and it's a precious piece of work to get them secured. However, we do it at last, and we search them, but nothing's found upon them and they're locked up, and a pretty state of heat we are in by that time, I assure you. I was very blank over it myself, to think that the prop had been passed away, and I said to Witcham, when we'd all set him to rights, and were cooling ourselves along with Mr. Tap, we don't take much by this move anyway, for nothing's found upon him, and it's only the braggadocia, after all. What do you mean, Mr. Weald? says Witcham. Here's the diamond pin, and in the palm of his hand, there it was, safe and sound. Why, in the name of wonder, says me and Mr. Tat, in astonishment, how did you come by that? I'll tell you how I come by it, says he. I saw which of them took it, and when we were all down on the floor together, knocking about, I just gave him a little touch on the back of his hand, as I knew his pal would, and he thought it was his pal, and he gave it to me. It was beautiful, beautiful. Even that was hardly the best of the case, for that chap was tried at the quarter sessions at Guildford. You know what quarter sessions are, sir? Well, 
If you'll believe me, while them slow justices were looking over the Acts of Parliament to see what they could do to him, I'm blood if he didn't cut out of the dock before their faces. He cut out of the dock, sir, then and there, swam across the river and got up into a tree to dry himself. In the tree he was took, an old woman having seen him climb up, and Witcham's artful touch transported him.